So why do I carry this ham radio? Um, well, some of the places we end up, uh, it is the only form of communication. Uh, well, hello and welcome to a rare look inside uh, Two Old Men in the Woods. Um, not only where we edit videos, but also uh, the main reason for coming inside is to show you a side of ham radio communications you don't see in the episodes. Uh, ham radio, which is technically amateur radio, according to the Federal Communications Commission, which regulates all of the electronic communications throughout the United States, um, is a hobby that allows individuals uh, with a license to communicate on specific bands. Uh, bands are, if you want to think of them, just as range of frequencies. So every ham radio operator had to have taken at least one test to get his initial license, which is called his technician class. At that point, they were assigned a uh, call sign uh, which you won't will not hear in any of the videos and I always edit those out out of respect of the privacy of the people that I talk to on air um, you can then take further uh, tests that give you um, access to different bands and or frequency ranges and also different power limits so amateur radio is a hobby is much much more than what you see in the videos uh, primarily I focus on what's referred to as field work or mobile radio communications where we use amateur radio to communicate um, away from the home, but a vast majority of the people that are involved deeply in the hobby uh, do a lot of their work from home, what they refer to as their ham radio shack or their station. We have a very, very small um, base station which allows us to communicate both locally and regionally, um, but it's very, very small and uh, nothing compared to what uh, some people have. Um, we're going to look primarily in this um, video at the use of the 2 meter band, which is from 144 up to 148 megahertz. And we're also going to subdivide that into the two main forms of communication with, within all ham radio, and that is what's referred to as simplex communications, which is point to point communications. I have a radio, you have a radio, I'm talking directly to you, you're talking directly back to me. And then also what we refer to as duplex communications. In duplex communications, we use what's referred to as a repeater. Um, so regionally around um, most counties, there's going to be a repeater station. And if you want to think of the repeater as a cell phone tower, that's a really, really good analogy where I can bounce my signal off of the repeater and get much wider coverage than I would if I were simply trying to communicate uh, point to point or in simplex. So with that in mind, uh, we hope you enjoy this in-depth look at ham radio on the go. So it might be hard to see, but off there in the distance, that tall tower, it's actually owned by the Educational Television, South Carolina branch of that, I guess what people call public television. The uh, repeater for um, Spartanburg's Amateur Radio Club that I use to communicate at times in here in Spartanburg County is on top of that tower. And there's a, one that we use a lot, like when Ronnie and I are up in Jones Gap or Caesar's Head, um, that's owned by the Greenville Club, same thing. So the repeater, that's what you bounce your signals off of to get better coverage um, if you're using a small handheld like I normally use out in the woods. Sorry about that. Look for a channel called Two Old Men in the Woods. Okay, all right. I'll make a little search on that here in a little bit to see. Yeah, there's ham radio in almost uh, every episode. Actually, yeah. Okay, so on two meter, which is the primary thing we use locally, um, little handheld. This is this this is a, actually a step up from the standard antenna, but it's pretty. You know, if you're right close to the repeater, which we explained earlier, um, it works pretty well. When you get down in a hole like this, you don't get a whole lot of uh, coverage. So I carry this additional. It's called a roll up J pole. And Ronnie's seen me use this before. It, it deploys pretty easily. This is the actual antenna itself. This is just feed line. What I do is I find a little tree like this that I can easily pull down. I'm going to try not to break it. There's a good spot right there. I'm going to take the end of the antenna and find a good spot. 
I would get on there. I try not to trip on my own line. And I let the tree elevate it. And I take off the stock antenna. Ensuring not to lose it, because it's not cheap either. And what we're doing is adding gain. It's kind of a pain to set up, but gain is kind of like a concept of how do I make my signal stronger and get out cleaner. Um, and I can't remember the gain characteristics on that, but that literally from this point up, that thing right there is the antenna. So now, when I call it in, it should be a lot clearer. Yeah, I just strung the J-pole up on the tree. I assume the uh, signal's a lot clearer than that last uh, transmission. Oh yeah, definitely so. Uh, it's amazing how the difference in the two antennas. Morning, brother. How are you? Doing good. Yeah, your pinfold was better on that J pole. Yeah, it's amazing, and I've told Kale this on many occasions, but that's the best thirty dollars I ever spent. All right, so on certain trips I carry up underneath my pack, this is a very directional gain, uh, eye gain antenna. My wonderful wife made me this beautiful pouch for it. Uh, that's the lead for it. But uh, So we talked earlier in the video about the difference between simplex and duplex, using a repeater and not using a repeater. Well, this is an attempt at what's called simplex communication, where you're on a specific call frequency that everyone in the nation monitors. And I'll show you here in a second. Now, this antenna is going to take a little bit of time to set up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the frequency of my handheld off of the repeater to the national simplex frequency, which is, if I can find it, 146.250. So I think I said that right. So now I take off my standard antenna, which I should turn the power off, but I never do. And I connect it to this antenna, which is called a directional Yagi. It's a backpackable directional Yagi. Uh, that's just a fancy word for a very, very directional antenna. So we're going to point it about in Kim's direction and attempt to make a direct contact, not using a repeater. So on the Yagi, you have what we call the driven element. That's where the signal's actually going in. You have the reflector element, which is supposed to reflect part of the signal back. And then, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the front element. And you'll see Yagis with multiple sets of beams. This is the three beam, I believe they would refer to it as. Thought I heard her. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, how copy? Mm. Not high enough. Plus two, way too many trees. Oh well, it was worth a try. Worth a try. You know why it hadn't ra it rained on us? Huh. Because we don't care. <laughs> if we cared, it would rain on if us. If we cared, it would rain. I don't care. I just don't. CQ from the top of Bald Knob at Table Rock State Park. CQ. CQ, CQ, or I'm on top of Bald Knob in Table Rock State Park. Roger, Roger, you're about a, about a, a barely readable here in 96 South Carolina. QSL, QSL. Roger that, sir. I appreciate the comeback. 73, have a great day. 73, and good luck. So I just realized that I lost 
one of my sticks somewhere in the last, how long have we been hiking, Kim? Pulling out the J pole. This is when you're going serious. This is when you're out in the middle of nowhere and what to do. And you positively got to talk. Big We're doing some scopage. This is ham radio. Try not to step on snakes. I wonder who's who's been into the tickets today. I got my spray on, dude. I'm rocking it. I haven't seen.